When did women first start working in office? Technically, women have been actively working for centuries. However, their employment was limited to domestic roles, such as sewing, cooking, and childcare. The only profession allowed for women outside the homes was that of a hawker. The Industrial Revolution, which took place in the early 1800s, marked a significant shift in women's traditional roles. While this period had a profound effect on their lives, it did not translate into equal opportunities. Women were paid significantly less than men. During the growth of the manufacturing industries, they exploited the lower average salaries of women and children. Textile mills in particular employed young girls who often faced discrimination and were subject to poor treatment. Consequently, the first feminist movement emerged, advocating for gender equality, with a specific focus on voting rights. At the outbreak of the American Civil War in 1861, women served in various capacities including soldiers, nurses, spies, civil rights activists, laundresses, and cooks. An astounding number of over 400 women disguised themselves as men to fight in the Civil War. Additionally, thousands of women served as nurses, and their contributions to medicine persisted even after the war. By 1900, women made up 91% of all nurses in the United States. The First World War in 1914 witnessed a significant increase in the number of women joining the workforce, as millions of men were away fighting the war. Women found new employment opportunities in clerical positions, with almost a million employed in various munitions-related work. Additionally, many women provided essential support on the front lines as nurses, doctors, ambulance drivers, translators, and occasionally even on the battlefield. During the Great Depression in 1929, the manufacturing industry was hit the hardest. Thousands of men were laid off, which drove women to work with a renewed sense of urgency, resulting in 24% increase in women entering workforce. Women were more insulated from job loss because they were employed in more stable industries like clerical work, restaurants, factories, laundries, libraries, schools, offices, hospitals, and beauty shops. During World War II, with men off to fight a worldwide war across the Atlantic and the Pacific, women were called to take their place on the production line. Women had to work in factories and other jobs to support the war. There were even female pilots who flew aircraft from the factories to the airfields. Several hundred thousand women served in combat roles, especially in anti-aircraft units. Approximately 350,000 women served in non-combat roles in the U.S. Armed Forces. These roles included administration, nurses, truck drivers, mechanics, electricians, and auxiliary pilots. Before the war, the majority of working women were from lower-class backgrounds, with many belonging to minority groups. Furthermore, some individuals held the opinion that women of middle or upper-class status should not engage in labor. The upper and most middle-class women typically refrained from paid work, with the exception of respectable positions like being a governess, music teacher, or even nurse. Women of this social standing were expected to marry, raise children, and manage household affairs. Professional careers such as law, veterinary medicine, and civil service were largely inaccessible to women during the 19th century. The traditional role of women as homemakers persisted throughout the 19th century and well into the 20th. However, the introduction of electrical power towards the end of the 19th century brought forth labor-saving devices such as washing machines and vacuum cleaners into the household. It wasn't until the 1970s that a significant number of married women began to enter the labor force. In 1900, only 6% of married women worked outside the home, often in cases where their blue-collar husbands were jobless. By 1970, 50% of single women and 40% of married women were participating in the labor force. Social and economic developments were the critical agents that changed the nature of women's work. For example, the growth of public education increased the demand for more teachers, and growing industrial and commercial enterprises required more office workers and salespeople. Whereas men had previously performed teaching and clerical tasks, employers found they could hire women for these occupations at lower salaries. Moreover, because these jobs tended to be cleaner and safer, the stigma attached to work for a married woman diminished. 
A century ago, women were forbidden from owning property, serving on juries, operating a bank account, or pursuing legal or civil service careers. Presently, the gender landscape has undergone tremendous transformation, with no indication of slowing down.